What's up Pyromaniacs? Pyrostasis here and today we are going to be looking at the Hearthfire DLC that you can pick up on Xbox Live at the moment for five bucks. If you're watching this later down the road it may already be available on PC and PS3. Now uh, when you first buy your plot you're going to come out and you're going to see something like this and this is going to be just your little area. This over here the drafting table is where you basically get your uh, your recipes so to speak and that's where your house starts so the small house layout you can get this uh, starting off if you like um, it's a completely standalone house but it also turns in later on to an entryway once you expand it so like if this is all you want this is all you have to do uh, if you want a bigger house then you'll have to obviously add on to it now let me show you the different houses and I can kind of explain this a little bit better. Go ahead and skip to the housing portion. I really need buck barks. All right, so this is a small house. Like I was saying, this can be a standalone house. It's very small, but it has everything you need. If you want a bigger house, you will add a main hall to the back of your small house and then your small house becomes your entryway. At that point, you have the option of adding wings. You can have, I believe, up to three additional wings, and each of those wings can be specialized into different things. So we'll be covering those later. But you can only have three, three of them. And you can pick which types you want, etc., etc. So it's, it's kind of an interesting little setup. You can kind of design the house to look how you want it to look. Uh, you know, do you want a wizard's tower? Do you want just extra storage space, etc., etc.? So for now, we're just going to start with covering how you build your house. So now that we've gotten this little bad boy written out and marked, now we need to start with the construction phase. All right, so once your house is set up and built, you're going to probably want to check this chest here. This chest does come with some supplies starting off. So specifically, the quarried stone and the clay are kind of new things. Your anvil over here, you can also build things just like you were at a normal blacksmithing spot, and building materials is what you're going to want to do. So we're going to make a couple stacks of nails right off the bat, just so that we have enough to work with. And let's check out the carpenter's workbench. Now here, we have house foundations. You can see it has zero weight and zero value. I believe building these is just going to drop it over in our little house behind us. Boom, there goes the foundation. So now you can see our foundation has been created and we now have a nice little setup. So it's no longer a little, uh, little marked off sections. Okay, so the next part that we need is going to be the house framing, which we need 10 nails and six sawn logs. Thankfully we've still got those. Now you can get sawn logs from any of the lumber mills. Uh, Redwood, or Riverwood would be a good spot there. Assuming uh, Hod's still alive. Sometimes he, he doesn't quite make it. So we've got our little pillars up now, which look kind of badass. I love the fact that this all gets modified as you do it. So we've got those set up. Let's actually see if we can make the walls. We may have to go gather a few resources to do that. Nope. Thankfully, it looks like we can make those now. So we can go ahead and create those. So now we've actually got the walls set up. Unfortunately, there's no roof. So if there's any rain, it would be very bad. And we don't have a door either, which is kind of odd. All right, let's make a couple more nails because I have a feeling I'm going to need some more. Dude, this feels like Minecraft on easy mode. All right. What do we need next? House floor, four quarried stone. That's easy. Let's snag that. I want to see what the floor looks like. I, I guess it's a little bit decorated. That's kind of cool looking. All that from four quarried stone. Those quarried stone must be absolutely epically huge. All right, so we need the roof framing. It's six sawn logs. We'll add that on right there. Let's go take a look at it. So the framing is just basically the supports, which I think is really cool. I did not expect to like this, but it is kind of growing on me. It reminds me a lot of uh, Ultima Online. All right, and so for this, the house roof, you need one sawn log and ten nails. That'll actually put the physical roof on. 
So we need iron fittings, locks, and two hinges for the next part. Iron fittings, lock, and two hinges. So here we go. I don't like that the supports are still visible, though. All right, let's make our iron lock, two hinge. Wait, what was it? Iron fittings, lock, and two hinges. Okay, iron fittings, lock, and two hinges. So we need one hinge, another hinge, iron fittings, and our lock. It will help, obviously, if you collect a bunch of supplies before you start working on this. Thankfully, I was raising my blacksmithing, so I just kind of had all this stuff laying around. All right, there's the house door. And there we go. Our house is now complete. This is now a 100% functional house. And you actually zone into it at this point, which is kind of cool. So at this point, your house is created, is sorted up. If you have a wife, um, I believe you have to have a bed before she will join you inside of here. So you've got your chest, and as you can tell, unlike the normal house, this is very, very sparse. So you know you don't have any of the nice setups or the fittings, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Now, one of the cool things though is now that your house is set up, I believe the workbench moves in here. So we don't have to necessarily go outside to get some of the stuff set up. But you've got all these cool things that you can set up um, and decorate, you know, fire pit if you want, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just build this fire pit just to see what happens once we do. So let's build the fire pit. Fire pit has been built, and boom, it just drops. And I don't think you can move any of these things. So these are all just kind of randomly, well not necessarily randomly, but they are put in here for you. And this is how it all gets set up. So we need two nails and two straw to make a double bed. Gotta have a double bed, can't have a single bed. All right, let's zone out. I wanna take a look at some of the other uh, pieces of our house that we can throw on because I know we can do uh, some, some actual additions onto this little setup. And I don't know how we're going to go about uh, constructing the main hall, which is what we're eventually going to want. So I'm probably not going to focus too much on this little house, unless I absolutely have to, because, you know, I want the big pimp and mansion. I also don't know if there's any differences between building your house here and, say, at Dawnstar, which I've heard is also another location. Uh, you probably can have multiple houses when it's all said and done. I don't know what the costs are going to be and what the difference is in the costs between lands. Because like a normal house, you know, if you're going with the Breeze home in Whiterun, that's going to be cheap. Versus, well, hello, dear. Versus like the Solitude house. So let's see what the drafting table has. Is it upgraded yet? There we go. So now we can add on the main hall if we want. So I'm going to definitely add on the main hall. Let's take a look at what that little guy looks like. Boom! It's on the back of the house now. This is awesome. All right, let's see if we've got enough to put the foundation for that thing down. Main hall door, animal pen. Okay, so this is all of the stuff that would go inside. So you can get a garden, well, not all inside. A garden obviously would be outside. You can set up a smelter a stable if you want so that you can house your horses, animal pens for animals, etc, etc. So we need an iron fitting, a lock, and two nails. And I think I'm out of corundrum ingots. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of work real quick before we continue on with this. All right, so we're still here at the house. The quarry for the stone is right here and you can quarry all that you like. They even give you a pickaxe, which is awesome. So we're gonna go ahead and chop some of this stuff. I think this is really cool because you've got most of the resources that you need naturally right here at your house that you can easily access without having to go and buy it. Now, uh, a lot of these resources can be purchased uh, if you do in fact need to do so. But it's just kind of cool that, you know, you can come over here and just farm the wild. I'm gonna get a good amount of this quarried stone and then we're gonna continue on building the house. All right, we've got plenty of stone now for the foundation. So I'm going to go ahead and place that bad boy right now. Bam. 
Damn, that is huge. So it's kind of interesting because I'm just barely going to have enough space back here to expand backwards, once left, and once right. Because you do only get the ability to have three wings. So let's go ahead and put the floor down. Hopefully I've got the materials for that. I do. And we need some nails real quick. I have eight. We need 20. Thankfully I have plenty of iron ingots. I definitely recommend stocking up on those before you... Uh, start working on your house so there you can see we've got the little uh it's no longer plain because we've got the the flooring in let's get the wall set up so we need more sawn logs and more nails 26 nails and we only have eight so here we go got that in i believe i can get some logs from right over here i may actually have to get yeah, I'm going to have to get a woodcutter's axe. So let me find one of those real quick, and we shall continue. All right, guys, we have managed to get some more components. I'd go to Riverwood and buy some more logs from Hod, but we should be able to expand both the walls and the second floor supports for our house. Let's take a look at what those look like. That means I will no longer be able to enter my house here from the front door until I finish it, which is kind of odd. And I, I actually want to see what happens when I zone in. So we're going to zone in real quick. I'm going to cut that so you guys don't have to deal with the loading times. And I want to see if I can actually get in there and look at it from that standpoint. All right, as you can see, we are inside the house now. And this is going to be my, uh, what do you call it, my entryway eventually. And right here, we've got another door to Skyrim. And over here, we've got our door to Skyrim. So I'm curious to see if, because eventually this uh, addition is going to be part of my actual house. But you can't access it from outside, so you technically have to zone into an instance so that you can zone out to your world. And I just, I don't know, part of me finds that cool. It's a little nerdy thing in me. But I also want to see if I can jump from inside to outside without breaking anything. And I'm pretty sure I'll be able to. But I kind of like being able to show off the different stages of the house, which is going to get harder and harder to do as I expand uh, this structure more. So, but, uh, good lord, loading screen is taking forever! That's one thing I don't miss about, or I miss about the PC big time, is it's the almost instant loading screens, yeah. Alright, so this is what the main hall looks like now that we've got the support struts in. And this is our second floor, which looks really cool. And, yep, we can walk right out. Sadly, there's no way to get in there without zoning in like that, though. All right, so what is the next part that we're going to be throwing onto the house? Looks like the roof framing, which is just basically going to be the outside or the, the support structure, as you can see up there, to hold it all in place. So let's make a few nails real quick so that we can build up, whoops, no, I don't want to build that. I'm just going to build a few of these because I'm tired of constructing them. All right, house, main hall, second level walls. Interesting. Nice. So it still doesn't have a roof, and I don't know if I can get high enough for you guys to see that. You can probably see it from right there. So the house is 90% built, but just not quite finished yet. So we're going to go ahead and throw that roof on. And boom. Ooh, cellar. We're going to need a lot of quarried stone for a cellar. So now this is going to be my entryway. So I'm going to go ahead and show you guys this before I mine the quarried stone. So you guys can see it should be one instance now as opposed to two. So let me show you what the inside looks like now. All right, so we've still got the, the main entryway here which is kind of odd now that I've got this giant fire pit in the middle of my room. But now instead of having a zoning line, we can actually walk in here like a normal. And it looks basically the same as the other version. You also notice there are a ton of additional, well not a ton, but two extra additional carpenter benches. There may be more upstairs. Looks like that's one there, so that'd be three. And that's it. And I'm sure each of these has its own upgrades at stuff that we can get. Let's take a quick look at some of these. So basically, it's just an extension 
of the front area. But you can see there's a lot more options now that have unlocked themselves because of this, which is really cool. Plus, you got the Alchemy Lab, Arcane Enchanter, etc., etc. Which kind of sucks, unfortunately, because uh, my smelter is outside. I'd actually have to go outside to smelt. Of course, I guess you probably wouldn't want to smelt inside your house. All right, well, we're going to go outside and start working on the cellar. All right, so we've now quarried from the quarry over there all of the stone needed to build our cellar. So let's build that thing and take a look at what it looks like. Now I'm assuming this is going to be added on to the uh, to the inside. This will complete pretty much the main hall. All right, as you can see, pretty much everything looks the same, except we now have a cellar back here in the back which oh no it looks like it is another zone line hopefully it's not too bad of a low time but i have a feeling it's going to be fairly nasty so that's kind of a bummer ah oh, damn it's like dark as hell down here i mean this is a nasty dank cellar very cool though let's see what additions we can place here hopefully some of it is lights lights are in dire need Oh, wow, you could do shrines. All sorts of cool things. And these are the wall sconces, and those are actually what would light the walls to keep it from just being absolutely so dark down here. <laughs> it does require goat horns, which means you're going to have to go and murder a bunch of goats. Don't tell my brother that. All right, guys, we're going to go ahead and start adding the wings to our house now. All right, so now that we have our house 100% complete, it's time to pick the wings. We get a west wing, a north wing, and an east wing. You wanna come over here to the drafting table and you get to sort through the different ones that you want. So for your east wing, your choices are armory, kitchen, library, or, well, that's pretty much it, yeah. Armory, kitchen, or library. For north wing, you have alchemy and storage and trophy room. And for the West Wing, Bedrooms, Enchanter, and Greenhouse. Uh, then you finally have the option to remove all these workbenches. Um, if you remove them, that gets rid of the eyesore, but I believe you will no longer be able to build those inside of your house. You can probably come back out here and replace them once you're finished. So for us, we're going to want to do an Armory for the East Wing. That's what that's going to look like. I'm going to want a Trophy Room for the Back Room. And then we're going to go with a west wing of bedrooms, I think. I don't know, an enchanter might be kind of cool too. Not sure if I'm going to want to have... Well, we're going to go with bedrooms for this house. And then I will I will deal with the, the issue of, a chil of children and a wife later on. So we're going to set that up there. Trophy room for the back. And then we're going to go ahead and go with the bedrooms for the west. There we go. And that will complete the house once it's all said and done. I'm actually a little surprised that those aren't... Oh, maybe you can only have one at a time. Yep, you can only do one at a time. Well, then we're going to do the trophy room first. So let's, let's do the trophy room first. There we go. All right, trophy room. Let us see how expensive this little monster is going to be. So we need locks. Wow, two locks, four hinges, and two iron fittings. Building materials, two locks. We needed two hinges and four iron fittings. And we sh well, I'm going to go ahead and make a little bit more nails, just to be sure. I'm actually getting kind of low on iron ingots. I had like 60 when I started this. Oh, I'm missing two hinges. Damn it. There we go. Those must be some massive doors, man. Better be keeping my stuff safe. Alright, so now we've got the trophy doors, the foundation. The floor, wall supports, roof framing, walls, and I'm missing some nails. Go ahead and take you back here so you can see how big this thing is. 
And this thing is literally like right up against the edge of the property. Kind of a nice looking little setup. Let's go make a couple more nails and see if we can't get this bad boy finished off. Not quite sure I heard why I heard something rattle there. It was interesting. Sounded like somebody's sword in a scabbard bounced, except uh, mine's here. All right, let's go take a look at the trophy room on the inside. All right, we are in the back of the main hall, and thankfully, unlike the cellar, it's not a zone in point. It is a little small, though. I was kind of hoping for something a little bit bigger, but it should be plenty of room to place my Daedric artifacts and such. And as you can see, containers, you've got, oh, come on, where is it? Trophy, case, and shelf. So here are the, the cases and such that you can use to display. Um, you've got some wall shelves. What are the miscellaneous stuff? Oh, a mounted goat head. And some trophy bases. So this is actually where you could, you could set up your trophies. So I'm going to see how this works real quick. We just made a trophy base. That'd be right here. Okay. Well, this is a different kind of trophy than I was expecting. But maybe you can equip these things. Like a Falmer, you could set him up with um, a Falmer weapon or armor or such like that. But it's still kind of cool. I kind of like that. And if they look even remotely like they are here, they're going to be pretty awesome. So you can surround this whole room with these little trophies. And hopefully put some data artifacts in here as well. And you have a pretty cool looking trophy room. Alright, so let's go ahead and add on our armory and see what that looks like. Alright guys, we have the armory finished. And the cool thing is it adds this nice little setup right here. To where you can actually access your house from a secondary entrance point. Which I think is really cool. Now, the secondary zone in does spawn you on the second floor, so if you want to access the armory, you do have to come down, and it's kind of cool. You end up with two doors access to the armory, which is kind of nice. And let's see what you've got in the workbench here. Some display cases. So this is where you'll be putting your Daedric artifacts, not the trophy room, which is interesting. Some more display cases, so plenty of spots, plenty of weapon racks, armor, uh, mannequins, just a ton of stuff. So if you're wanting to display your weapons and armor and such, the armory obviously is where you'd want to do it. For some reason, the trophies kind of made me think that would be uh, would be the spot, but I feel this place is going to be badass once you hunt enough monsters. All right, let's go ahead and add the residence on and see what that looks like. Alright guys, we have now completed the bedroom, so the house is 100% finished, at least uh, physically. Cosmetically, there is a hell of a lot of customization I still need to do. I'm going to go ahead and give you guys a brief walk around the premises real fast, and then I'll show you guys what the residence looks like. So as you can see, it's a fairly decent sized house. This uh, would pretty much put it on par with the uh, house in solitaire. So let's go look at the residence. All right, the residence, very much like the armory, has two doors for it. And it looks pretty bare when you first start off. There's no real dividers. There's no real individual rooms. So I'm assuming this is just going to turn into one big-ass suite. Let's look at some of the options that we have. So just some wardrobes. Uh, you do have the option for a safe, and that is an awesome looking safe. I would definitely like to add that. So you can have two children's beds, um, your double bed. So I guess this will eventually get divided. Probably once the beds are placed. And I'm not showing, ah, wall scone, no. No, I'm not showing any way to really set it up into individual rooms. So the only thing I can assume is as you place the beds and such, the uh, the individual rooms will get formed. So this is pretty much the maxed out house that I chose with the armory, the cellar, the trophy room, and the, uh, the residence. 
I do believe a residence is required if you wish to have your wife move in and if you wish to adopt children which I'll be covering in a later video. Also going to be decorating this over the next couple days, and once I'm finished with it, I'll show you guys what it looks like. Hope you guys liked this video. If you did, please click that like button. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my other videos, tips, tricks, and guides. And I'll catch you guys in the next clip.